So up until now, I've just uh, been throwing science at the wall to see what sticks. Uh, but I'm going to need to get a bit more serious to uh, figure out just what the math is going on with uh, my DC offset. Uh, so here's the back end stage of my in-amp. I have my two input voltages, V1, V2. Uh, I have my V ref, which is where my DC offset correction knob goes. Uh, my output voltage V out, and R1, and R2. So let's start by thinking about what my DC offset correction at uh, V ref actually does. So op amps will adjust their output voltage until the uh, voltages at the two inputs are equal to each other. So let's say I have uh, zero volts of difference between V1 and V2. Let's say we tied those together and then tied those to ground. So now because uh, V1 and V2 are the same, and the op amp is going to want to make V minus and V plus the same, and these two resistor dividers are the same, uh, the only way uh, the op amp can do that is if it makes the output voltage equal to V ref. So if you remember, this whole circuit here is a differential amplifier, which means that it amplifies the difference between V1 and V2. So here when we have zero difference, we're going to want a zero at the output, um, and the voltage that it gives at the output in that case is V ref. Uh, so basically V ref tells the op amp circuit uh, what zero volts is. And this implies that the output voltage should change with the reference voltage volt for volt. Uh, so if I increase V ref by one volt, the output should increase by one volt, regardless of what's going on at the uh, input. So the first thing that tells me is that uh, when, uh, when I was turning the uh, DC offset correction knob and nothing was happening at all, uh, that something was pretty seriously busted, and uh, the output or something in the circuit was uh, completely railed. That also tells me that it doesn't matter whether most of the gain is in the back end or most of the gain is in the front end, uh, because either way, as long as the overall gain is the same, the uh, uh, DC offset correction knob is going to have the same effect on the output. So let's think about it this way. If this amplifier had a gain of 10, and I put uh, 1 tenth of a volt between V1 and V2, the output is going to be 1 volt with respect to V ref. Now if I change V ref by 1 volt, that will uh, effectively cancel out the uh, DC offset of 1 tenth of a volt between V1 and V2. Or more generally, we can say that uh, Whenever we change VREF, the amount of uh, DC that it cancels out at the input uh, is equal to the voltage that we change VREF by uh, multiplied by the inverse of the gain, or divided by the gain. And because we had two stages to this amplifier, both of them with gain, uh, as long as the overall gain was the same, let's say 1000, uh, 1 volt of correction here uh, at the output is um, going to uh, cancel out one millivolt of DC offset at the input, regardless of where we shift the gain. So now that I figured out that uh, shifting the gain between the front end and back end isn't going to help at all as far as DC offset goes, um, if I'm going to fix my circuit to uh, get rid of this DC offset, I'm going to need to understand where it's coming from. And some of it could actually be coming from the impairments of the op amp itself. Uh, here I have the data sheets for the LM324 that I'm using. Uh, the important numbers are the uh, uh, input bias current, uh, offset voltage, and offset current. Alright, so first let's talk about uh, what these impairments are. Here I've got an op amp. There's going to be some uh, input offset voltage built into the op amp. Uh, so there's already going to be a voltage present at the two inputs um, just because of uh, imbalances in the transistors at the input. And that's what the uh, input offset voltage, or VOS, is. There's also going to be some amount of current flowing into the inputs of the op amp, or in this case, out of the inputs, actually, because the LM324 has uh, PNP transistors at the input, so current's actually going to flow out. That's not too important. So there's going to be uh, some amount of current uh, flowing out of these inputs just to turn the transistors on at the input. Uh, and that's called the uh, bias current, so we'll call that IB. Now, because of the same type of uh, imbalance that creates this offset voltage, uh, there's going to be an imbalance in the two currents. So one of these currents is going to be a bit larger than the other, and that's called the offset current. So one's going to have a little bit more current, and we'll call that IOS, for offset. All right, I'm going to characterize the effects of uh, all these impairments on my circuit um, by computing the amount of uh, voltage I'll need to give to the uh, correction knob in order to cancel them out. So here I've turned it back into the differential amplifier. 
and I have my v1, v2, uh, v ref, and v output. So really the only important part of the circuit is uh, this little branch right here. And that's because that's where I'm actually applying my uh, offset correction. So let's start with the uh, offset voltage. Now in reality, there's going to be some voltage difference uh, between V plus and V minus just built into the op amp. So what we want to do is use VREF to uh, alter V plus uh, by the same voltage as that offset voltage to uh, cancel it out. So again, we'll assume that uh, V2 is just at ground just to make things easier. And uh, we want to find out uh, what value of VREF will cause V plus to be equal to the offset voltage, VOS. So we can say VREF. Uh, times R1 over R1 plus R2 equals V plus. That's just our um, formal voltage divider uh, equation. Now we want this to be equal to VOS, the offset voltage, in order to cancel out the difference. So now we just move this stuff around and we get V ref equals R1 plus R2 over R1 times VOS. So now this tells us, uh, given a certain offset voltage, how much we're going to need to change the reference voltage in order to cancel it out. And if you remember, the gain of this amplifier uh, is R2 over R1. Uh, so what this tells us is that the larger the gain is, uh, which means the larger R2 is with respect to R1, uh, the more we're going to have to change VREF in order to compensate for the offset voltage. Uh, so uh, lower gains make it easier for us to cancel out this offset voltage. Now let's think about the uh, current impairments uh, from these inputs. So we're going to have um, some bias current flowing out of those inputs, uh, and that's going to be flowing through these resistors, and uh, that'll cause voltage drop over them. And because the resistors are the same on both sides of the circuit, if we put the same current uh, out of both of those inputs, we're going to get the same voltage drops, and then that's going to cancel itself out, and it won't be a problem. Um, in reality, uh, the resistors aren't going to be perfect, and they're going to be imbalanced a little bit. Um, I'm going to ignore that for now and just worry about the offset current, uh, which is the difference in the bias currents that's just uh, inherent to the op amp. So since all I care about is the difference in bias currents, the offset current, I'm just going to worry about that in my little circuit analysis here. So again, I'm going to put my uh, V2 at ground, put my V ref in here, uh, for now, I'll just assume that's also ground, and then uh, I will put in my little current source, my offset voltage. So then I want to find out uh, just how much uh, voltage is going to be uh, caused by this offset current. And that's just going to be uh, IOS, uh, there we go. And that's just going to be equal to uh, IOS times both of these resistors in parallel. Alright, and so that is going to be another offset voltage at V+, uh, on top of this offset voltage that's already there. And we already know what we need to do to uh, cancel out some offset voltage. So let's, uh, so let's just plug this voltage into uh, the offset and find out what we need to do to cancel out this bias current. Vref equals R1 plus R2 over R1, which just comes from over here. And then VOS in this case is going to be I offset times R1 R2 for R1 plus R2 coming from over here. Uh, so then some stuff cancels out. And we end up with IOS times R2. Now this tells us um, how much we need to uh, change the voltage at the reference here in order to compensate for the extra voltage caused by the uh, offset current. And this is based on the value of R2. So again, uh, a larger gain of this uh, amplifier uh, is going to make it more difficult to correct this uh, offset current. So let's figure out uh, just how bad these are going to be with the uh, LM324. So again, we're saying the amount we need to change VREF by in order to compensate for the offset uh, voltage R1 plus R2 over R2 times the offset voltage, and the amount we need to change VREF by in order to compensate for the offset current is R2 times IOS. Now let's uh, plug in some numbers and uh, see what we actually end up with. Uh, so let's take a look at the case where we have a back end gain of uh, 100, uh, which means my uh, 
R1 in this equation is going to be 1 kilo ohm and R4 is going to be 100 kilo ohms. So let's plug those in. Now for the uh, values of the offset voltage and offset current, we can plug in what we get from the data sheets here. Uh, so 2 millivolts for the offset voltage and 5 nanoamps for the offset current. Alright, so once that's all plugged in, we end up with, uh, with a value of about 0.2 volts to cancel out uh, the effect of the offset voltage and about uh, half a millivolt to cancel out the effect of the offset current. And, uh, those are pretty small, so those should be easy to cancel out. Uh, we have to keep in mind that those are only uh, average values here on the data sheet. They also have uh, maximum values listed for the uh, info offset current, uh, which could go all the way up to uh, 30 nanoamps, and the uh, offset voltage could go all the way up to 3 millivolts. Uh, but these should be good average numbers and uh, give us an idea of roughly the order of magnitude of uh, correction that we're going to need to cancel these out. Uh, and again, this doesn't look all that bad. Um, it's, only, it's still less than half a volt that we need to turn this knob by uh, in order to cancel out all of the impairments of, uh, of the back end of the circuit. And since it's always good to test these sorts of things, uh, I've built up just the back end of this circuit. Um, and I've tied both of the inputs together, so they're at uh, so they should have uh, zero volts of difference between the two. And then I tie this to the output of a uh, voltage follower, which uh, just buffers the voltage um, at a resistor divider that splits the supply. So this is basically going to be right at uh, 4.5 volts, or roughly. And it will be, uh, basically this will be the ground in my circuit. And then the reference voltage, just like in the, the circuit that I had built up, is going to be, uh, again, coming off of a uh, uh, voltage buffer. Uh, but this time it's going to be coming off of a variable resistor. And that's going to be my offset correction knob. And I built this up with uh, a gain of 100. So we can check to see if uh, these numbers are roughly correct. All right, so now I've got it hooked up with the uh, voltmeter going between uh, this point, uh, which I'm calling my ground, and uh, the output of the circuit. So let's turn this on. And, oops, that was not right. That was on uh, ohms. Right now I've got it on volts. Uh, we can see that. Uh, Output's changing when I turn this knob, that's fine. Now let's try and get that uh, all the way down to zero. And almost there. Nope, too far. Alright, that's close enough. So I'm going to basically call that zero. Now I'm going to take the uh, voltmeter off of the output of the circuit and instead connect it to my uh, VREF to see how much I need to change VREF by in order to cancel out any DC offset impairments. Yeah, about uh, 42 millivolts. Uh, so this 0 0.04 volts of uh, correction uh, is even less than I predicted, uh, being about 0.2 volts. So that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, I guess I got kind of lucky, or um, maybe the resistors were imbalanced and uh, some other impairment sort of canceled out uh, offset voltage impairment a little bit. But at any rate, it's pretty clear that uh, the impairments of the back end are uh, not what are causing the uh, DC offset problem that I've been seeing. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and move on to the front end and uh, see what's going on there.